I can confirm that the Met is now investigating a number of events that took place at Downing Street and Whitehall in the last two years in relation to potential breaches of COVID-19 regulations. Let's speak to the political commentator, Claire, Claire Pearsall. Claire, always a pleasure to have you on. OK, so you know as well as I do that people across the world in their living rooms and dining tables are talking about Partygate. So I was speaking to someone on Saturday and he said to me, he said, you know what, during lockdown, we all did our best. We tried to follow the rules as well as we could. I want to know what you think is the most important thing here. Is it the decision making? Is it the optics? Is it the politics? What? I think that one of the most important factors in all of this is how much truth has been applied to the allegations that have come out. Because I think we can see that the Prime Minister and the truth have been distant friends at times. And it has taken now a senior civil servant to investigate and for more information to be revealed to the media. It feels like almost every day that happens. And that will breach the trust of the nation. And I think that is one of the most important things in politics. You need to have that trust. And once it is broken, it is really difficult to get it back. Boris Johnson wrote to a seven-year-old girl in his own writing on Downing Street paper, praising that young girl for postponing and delaying her birthday party because of lockdown. In terms of the optics, it looks absolutely awful, but it could get even worse. The British Prime Minister being interviewed by police investigating whether a crime has taken place, whether laws have been broken. How does he get past that? Well, this is the real crux of the matter. If he can get past it, we may not find out the findings uh, of the police report for some time yet. However, there is rumour that the report by Sue Gray, the senior civil servant I mentioned, could land with us tomorrow. So that means that the Prime Minister could make a statement after Prime Minister's questions, which happens at 12 noon, so somewhere around 12.30, we could have the findings of that published. We don't know whether we will get the full findings or whether it will be a summary. But I think this is going to be extremely damaging for a prime minister who is already fatally wounded by a series of parties that shouldn't have happened. Yeah, I mean, for people who haven't been following as closely as uh, those of us who live in the UK, it all began with him saying, no, there were, uh, there were no parties, and then saying, OK, there may have been events, but I'm assured that the rules weren't broken. And then uh, when it was clear that the rules were broken, he then said, oh, nobody told me that the rules were being broken. So it's progressively become worse and worse. The opposition, uh, every single opposition party, says he himself has become a national distraction and that the government can't govern. Are they right? I think to some extent, yes, they are right. Uh, when you become a government which is now the subject of a meme on social media with you know, suitcases full of alcohol, with birthday cakes and birthday parties and excuses of it wasn't a party, it was a work event, then you lose that authority. When there are situations like the one happening in Ukraine and also the cost of living crisis here in the United Kingdom, if the Prime Minister is only being spoken about in jokey terms, then what possible merit can he have by staying in position? Claire, thank you so much indeed. Let's see how long this story continues. Really appreciate it. Always good to see you, as I said. Claire Pearsall.